In this video, I'll show you how to build a motion sensor alarm system that uses a GSM module and a PIC microcontroller to automatically SMS your phone when the alarm is triggered. Here's what you'll need for this project. I'm using the HCSR501 PIR motion sensor. It's cheap, it can be found on Amazon or eBay, it has two adjustment pots, and it has three connections, VCC, ground, and output. The output is low when it is not triggered and is just waiting to detect motion. The output goes high after it detects motion. These sensors detect a change in infrared heat from a person or animals, and even bugs can interfere with the sensor. You can use just about any GSM module. I'm using the SIM 800L. It's cheap, small, and works well. These are modems, like cell phone circuits. They can communicate with the internet, make phone calls, send and receive SMS messages, for this project, we will use the SMS messaging features. GSM modules require a SIM card with active service. I'm using a T-Mobile Pay-as-you-go SIM card. Also, the SIM card should not be pin-locked. To use a GSM module, you need to know some AT commands. AT commands are instructions that control modems. In a previous video, I showed you how to send and receive SMS messages using a computer and some AT commands. You can find a link in the description for that video. You will use some of the same commands for this project. The AT command with a response of OK tells you that the serial connection is OK. The AT plus CMGF equal 1 with a response of OK prepares the module for SMS messaging. AT plus CMGS equal quote a phone number end quote is the command to send an SMS message. Remember that the AT command with an OK response tells you that the serial communications is OK, but does not mean that the SIM card is correctly inserted or if the card is active and has working service. Now in order to communicate to GSM modules, they usually have the ability to understand asynchronous serial communication, or UART. So they have an RX and TX connection. This is how microcontrollers can talk to GSM modules, such as the SIM 800L. The TX line of the SIM 800L will output status and responses to any instructions the module received. A microcontroller is essentially a tiny computer on a chip. You just need to provide it some instructions or a program to tell it what to do. For this project, you are basically telling it to monitor the output of the PIR motion sensor and, if the sensor is triggered, the microcontroller will send AT commands to the GSM module instructing it to send a specific SMS message to a specific phone number. I'm using the PIC 12F683 microcontroller by Microchip. This is one of my favorite microcontrollers. Some of the features include an internal oscillator. It has an operating voltage range of 2 volts to 5.5 volts. It has flash-based program space, EE prom space, it has six I.O. pins, analog to digital converter, an analog comparator, and in-circuit serial programming. It has everything I need for most of my projects. And it fits on the tip of my finger. This is the uh, schematic I came up with. The uh, SIM 800L's operating voltage range is 3.8 volts to 4.2 volts. And the recommended voltage is 4 volts. So I'm using this buck converter here, and I'm putting 5 volts at the input, and I'm adjusting it to get 4 volts at the output. The uh, SIM 800L and the PIC microcontroller will get 4 volts. The logic level for the SIM 800L is about 2.7 volts. A voltage divider will provide the proper voltage level for the RX line of the SIM 800L. The PIR motion sensor will get 5 volts. If you look at the uh, PIC 12F683 on the schematic, notice the 5, 4, 1, and 2. Those are actually the GPIO ports. Uh, the PIC 12F683 needs some programming, so you'll need some type of IDE or integrated development environment. This usually consists of a source code editor and a compiler that targets uh, your specific microcontroller. So you'll need some programming knowledge uh, for whatever language your compiler supports. You need a way to uh, program the microcontroller from your IDE with a device programmer using uh, in-circuit serial programming, 
or from burn code uh, or hex file that uh, your compiler can generate. Uh, my IDE can target most common off-the-shelf microchip PIC microcontrollers. Let's take a look at uh, some of my source code and I'll let you know what I'm doing here. The uh, first part is just a delay. It's a for next loop that pauses the program uh, to give the SIM 800L time to acquire a cellular connection um, before it arms itself. And the uh, for next loop is about uh, 30 seconds. The ser out to command tells GPIO port 5 to send the AT command with $0D to the SIM 800L. $0D is a carriage return. Now I heard that if you send the AT command several times, it may wake up the module if it's not responding. The serin2 command waits for an OK response at GPIO port 4. Now I'm doing this to ensure that it has good communications between the microcontroller and the SIM 800L before the system is armed. This is the main part of the program. It's a loop that does two things over and over again. The first thing is it blinks an LED and that blinking LED tells you that the alarm is armed. The second thing is it continually checks to see if the motion sensor output is high or not. If it sees that the output is high, it will go to a subroutine called alert. This is the subroutine called alert. And if your alarm system is running this part of the program, that means the motion sensor has detected motion. And now it's in the process of sending an SMS alert to your phone. And here's how the process goes. The AT plus CMGF equal one with $0D command prepares the module for SMS messaging and then wait for an OK before proceeding. The AT plus CMGS command starts the SMS process. Note that the serout2 command requires quotes before and after the serial data that is being sent. And the AT command AT plus CMGS equal quote a phone number end quote requires a phone number with quotes before and after also. Now I can't use quotes within quotes for my sear out syntax in my programming, so I figured out that I have to use the ASCII equivalent. So the sear out to line is sending AT plus CMGS equal $22, the phone number $22, $0D. The $22 is equivalent to a quote in ASCII. So after sending that, I get a response of a greater than sign. This is the prompt to send a message for your SMS. After the AT plus CMGS command, I get the greater than prompt. This means I need to provide a message. This serout2 line has the message. Motion sensor triggered $0D. This is the SMS message I'll be sending. You must also include the $0D carriage return after the message. After providing this message, I wait for another greater than prompt. Since I don't have anything more to add to my message, I need to send a control Z to end the CMGS process and send the message. Control Z is $1A. Then I wait for the OK response, and that means the message has been sent. The END command just ends the program. Here's a close-up shot of my motion sensor alarm with the PIC microcontroller and GSM module. SIM 800L. The LED is blinking, meaning that it's armed. I did disconnect the power to the uh, motion sensor so I don't uh, trigger it. Here's the antenna for the GSM module. Here's the buck converter. There's 5 volts coming in on the left. 4 volts coming out of the right. The 4 volts is feeding the SIM 800L GSM module and the PIC 12F683 microcontroller. 5 volts is being fed directly to the PIR motion sensor. Okay, my alarm system is powered on. I made a cardboard tube and I put the PIR motion sensor in the tube so I don't trigger the alarm. The LED is blinking, meaning it is armed. The LED on the SIM 800L GSM module is blinking every three seconds, meaning it has a cellular connection. I'll go ahead and wave my hand over the sensor to see if it triggers the alarm. 
and the green LED should turn solid green, sending me an SMS message. And I should get an SMS alert soon. Here's the SMS message. It says motion sensor triggered. Thank you very much for watching. If you would like to see more of my videos, please subscribe and have a great day.